All right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to describe uh, what EPT is, expedited partner therapy, uh, then the uh, patient-delivered uh, partner therapy. I mean, they're used interchangeably. Uh, I'm going to give you a national overview of the legal status of the states, uh, highlight some of the limitations that are associated with uh, uh, health department partner management is how we have traditionally in the past tried to get uh, people uh, treated that have been exposed to an STI. Uh, the benefits associated with uh, EPT and uh, uh, partner-delivered uh, patient therapy, and then identifying some resources uh, as far as training for uh, both uh, providers and partners around EPT. Uh, first, what is EPT and patient-delivered therapy? Uh, really what it comes down to is this is a way of providing medication to those individuals that have been exposed to an STI without them having to go to a provider or a uh, clinic and to have a medical evaluation or have some kind of counseling. In essence, what I would do as a provider, I've diagnosed a young lady with gonorrhea, she says she has a partner, I would then either write a prescription uh, that uh, uh, her partner could come and pick up the prescription or in some states where they've got it set up that individual could go to the pharmacy and pick up their uh, prescription and be treated. Uh, the patient delivered therapy would be the situation where I either give the prescription directly to the uh, partner or I give the partner the medication to give to their uh, partner uh, is the uh, patient delivered uh, therapy. Uh, here uh, looking at where it is legal, I know that uh, there have been a number of battles uh, in states around uh, uh, getting this legalized uh, in, in a number of states. And here, just to really give you a very quick highlight, looking at where EPT is permissible, as you can see, the state's in blue. Uh, you can identify your state. Uh, you can see where EPT is uh, most likely prohibited. And uh, where EPT is potentially allowable, you've got uh, Oklahoma and Connecticut uh, are on there as uh, potentially al allowable. And then obviously where you've got the legislation uh, that's being introduced in, in uh, some other locations. Uh, this is really an, a very good tool uh, to use. And the reason why Gail kind of alluded to uh, some of that, not, uh, let me go ahead and, uh, and I, let me pause for a moment there and give you the limitations before I go into the benefits. The limitations, why? Uh, relying solely on health department partner management will not work. As you can see here, with health departments, the partner notification service, we, we are not able to really get in contact with all parties. And you can see here, 20% of the people diagnosed with gonorrhea and chlamydia infection uh, receive this service. And so, given that fact, we don't have enough resources in order to be able to have an impact on reducing morbidity by trying to get partners treated. That is a limitation with partner management. The other thing that with the health department, we're having fewer and fewer freestanding STD clinics remain viable. And so that is another issue that we're faced with. And so again, you don't have uh, what's called disease intervention specialists or in some instances public health uh, advisors going out and trying to make that contact because there are fewer resources. And so this is one of the limitations with health department driven partner management. Uh, you can see here that the uh, traditional public health, uh, public, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the traditional public health partner services are ineffective when it's provided outside of an STD clinic setting. Again, the resources are not there to have someone assigned to go out and make the home visit and get them treated. So again, that's a limitation with health department partner management. And as you can see here, the resources are not there outside of the STD clinic. Clinicians uh, don't have uh, the uh, resources and the wherewithal to actually follow up. Uh, having been in this business for 28 years, and I can just tell you what that requires is you get the information on the partner, you get the address, you make a home visit, you try to get them into the clinic. That can take some time. They get into the clinic, they get examined, and then they get treated. Now that can take if you're lucky, sometimes 24 to 48 hours. But again, if not, it may take a week or longer, but it's the time spent to make the home visit, make the follow-up and, and the contact. And I can tell you now, private providers don't have that time. 
they don't have the resources to make that happen. And so uh, that is a challenge, and, and that's a limitation with health department partner management. And you can see here approximately one half of, of those exposed uh, partners receive treatment. And, and so there are grave limitations solely relying on the uh, health department to do the pa uh, partner management. Now, looking at the benefits associated with EPT or uh, PTB, it, limited access to care does not allow for everyone to be seen by a physician. And so given that fact, this is an opportunity that you can get those that have been exposed to an STI either through EPT or the partner delivered uh, patient therapy, uh, the medication. Health departments, as I pointed out, and private providers don't have the resources to follow up uh, on each and every one of the partners exposed. But the, to me, the most important thing, it allows for the partners to work together. And I should say, and this is kind of what Gail was alluding to, an opportunity for the provider to be talking to that patient about how you can go about and do this. Uh, educating them about the risk associated with not using prevention. And so again, this is a way of engaging that discussion because all too often what we've done in STI is we've taken that away from the patient that's in infected. I, as the health department, I'm going to go ahead and make that contact. You don't have to worry about that. And so I'm off the hook. I don't have to worry about it. Somebody else is going to do it. That isn't necessarily the best way to do it obviously, one from resources, but from the other standpoint of truly having an opportunity to engage that individual about the importance of prevention. You as a provider now have an opportunity to talk about you've been diagnosed with an STI. I'm looking for you to follow up on that partner. Now, how do we minimize you getting an STI the next time around? Uh, that is a way of it truly engaging because, again, if the onus is on me to contact my partners, I've got to figure out how do you do this? And do I want to do this again? Do I want to have that conversation with my partner another time about this? And so, again, this is a way of the how-to. How do I make that happen? And to the point of, of Gail's uh, point on sexual health, this is, again, an opportunity for the provider to have that discussion about sexual health that allows that opportunity. And when we say sexual health, people need to understand it's not about promoting sex. Sexual health is, one, truly understanding what it means to be healthy when it comes to sex. What, what are we talking about with sex? Because all too often, the mindset is that unless I inserted either into a rectum or a vagina, it didn't count. Well, in some instances, it only counts if I put it in a vagina. If it goes in the mouth or re rectum, it didn't count. And so what we've got to do is truly with sexual health, help people understand when we say sex, what does that mean? Also, what does it mean from a sexual health standpoint, how do I get out of situations? All too often what we do is we talk about condoms, but a lot of adolescents want to know how do I get out of it? I don't want to have sex, but this young man or this young woman is really putting a lot of pressure on me, then how do I disengage? And so again, all of this with EPT is an opportunity for that physician to have that discussion to help them and give them the tools necessary to get out of situations as opposed to, well, here's a condom, this is what you do. Because all too often, and I've dealt with a number of kids, both male and female, a lot of times they don't want to have sex, but they have not been given the tools on how do I get out of a situation. And so, again, uh, here looking at the last bullet, increases the proportion of partners that are treated. The training for EPT and PTB, unfortunately, there's not a single place to go for training. However, uh, this website here, Partner Care, this is a very, actually a very good website uh, to go to, and they've got a nice little animation on the uh, uh, EPT and PTB that really is a, uh, it lays it out in a very easy to follow uh, manner. And so I would encourage you to go to that uh, website and uh, the video lasts uh, probably about eight to ten minutes on uh, what it means to uh, be engaged in EPT or PTB. Uh, there are a number of uh, state and local health departments that have come up with some training around EPT and PTB, uh, but there isn't, again, not one single repository for training around EPT. Uh, the other thing here with this website, it's an opportunity for both patients and partners to understand what this means. So it's just not limited to providers, but it gives patients and partners an understanding about uh, EPT and PTP. 
the important thing here, as far as legislators, what you can do and what I would advise, sharing this information with communities on how this is a very good resource and educating communities about how this is a viable resource. That's, that's again, a way to make it happen where it can be a groundswell from the bottom up where you've got communities understanding that this is not a big bugaboo, but this is actually a very good resource that you can uh, rely upon in order to go ahead and uh, uh, do very good partner management. That's it. <laughs>